Hey, welcome back to University Speaks, episode four. I'm Devin Verissimo. And I'm Vanessa Lauren. We hope everyone had a wonderful break and is having a great start to their semester. February, as you know, is the history is the month of love, Black History Month, and of course, Chinese New Year. And we're talking about all of those in today's episode. Yes, but first, let's talk about on-campus news. The Rec Center is open and now offering free classes. We've got a preview of what they've got to offer coming up later in the show, so stay tuned. Along with an update with the, from the Performing Arts Center to see what they've been up to. And the art department has multiple events happening this month, including a few special exhibits dedicated to Black History Month. You can visit their website for the full list. Okay, now let's head off campus, starting with Anna and the celebration of the Chinese New Year. The Chinese New Year, also known as the Spring Festival, is a holiday that marks the end of the coldest days of the year and symbolizes new beginnings and fresh starts of the new lunar year. The Bellagio Conservatory is one of the many places you can visit to celebrate this holiday. In the entrance of the Bellagio Hotel lies a conservatory filled with bright flowers, enriching Chinese art sculptures that welcome guests as the Chinese New Year holiday approaches on February 12th. This year's zodiac animal is the ox, which symbolizes wealth, prosperity, perseverance, and diligence. The food dogs are at the entrance of the conservatory because they are said to keep areas safe from negative spirits. Across lies about 75 koi fish that welcome guests, and they are associated with bringing abundance and good fortune. A common Chinese decoration are the red lanterns that hang from the ceiling, which symbolize a booming life and prosperous business. At the end of the conservatory is a scene of Chinese children dancing and holding lanterns and firecrackers to celebrate the coming year. A common tradition for Chinese children is receiving red envelopes filled with money as a way to transfer good fortune from the elders to the kids. While the festivities begin on February 12th, the Chinese New Year is celebrated all the way through the 26th of February. With an abundance of activities to choose from, how are you going to celebrate the coming year? Another important aspect of Chinese New Year are the enriching foods that many create often from home. This can include spring rolls, whole fish, spring gluttonous rice cakes, and many more. I may not be a chef, but in the spirit of the new year, I tried making dumplings from scratch. You can check it out on social media pages at UNLV Speaks UNLV. That display of the Bellagio looked really cool. It's not easy to top <laughs> the fountains that are out front, you know? Right. I mean, it, it's beautiful. I was actually down there the other day, and I knew all that stuff was there, but I didn't really know what any of it meant. So that was really interesting. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, and who knew Anna was such a good cook? I think she brought us some dumplings. <laughs> no, I don't think she did. <laughs> but either way, I remember that time we tried to cook something fancy. Yes, that was for Valentine's Day last year, I think. And boy, was that rough. We'll have to find something different to do this year. Well, if you're like us and you haven't quite finalized your plans for V-Day, don't worry because Lena is here with some ideas. Flowers are such an important part of Valentine's Day. And whether you're in a relationship or even if you're single, flowers are a great way to show your loved one or yourself love. I visited a local family-owned flower shop right here in the Las Vegas Valley, Flowers by Michelle, and got a sneak peek of all the pretty flowers there. And even with COVID-19, businesses around the Valley are making sure this Valentine's Day is as special as possible. Voted Best of Las Vegas Gold winner by the Las Vegas Review Journal five years in a row, Flowers by Michelle is a local family-operated business that has everything you may need for Valentine's Day. So the owner is Michelle Jones, and she, when she was younger, she worked at a flower shop. And then when she was 21, the flower shop owner came to her because she wanted to sell and asked if she wanted to buy the business, and she did. One of the most important aspects of Valentine's Day is the flowers. They offer a variety of flowers to choose from, including flower packages, as well as other goodies to get your loved one. Well, we have lots of things. We have um, balloons, chocolates, um, caramels, we have home decor, we have silks, we have uh, giftware. Of course, our dozen roses and different things like that are also really, really popular at Valentine's Day. And to stay extra safe during Valentine's Day this year, they offer a delivery service. They deliver to many zip codes across the valley and even offer same-day delivery. And to those who want to check out the shop in person to find their loved one the perfect flower, they are open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and closed on Sunday. And they are taking multiple precautions to ensure everyone's safety during this pandemic. 
So we make sure that everybody wears a mask. We do ask everybody that who comes in to wear a mask. We have hand sanitizer everywhere and we do try to keep everything clean and sanitized as much as we can. Supporting local businesses like Flowers by Michelle during Valentine's Day via flowers, chocolates, and unique gifts is a great way to show your love to the special people around you. If anyone wants to get me some flowers, I'd like a dozen roses. But seriously, for more information, visit their website at flowersbymichelle.com. And remember to support local businesses in your community this Valentine's Day. <laughs> Best of Las Vegas for how many years? Five. Wow. They must really know their stuff. The only thing I really know about flowers is that rose, different roses mean colors mean different things. Yeah, exactly. Do, do you know them all? I know a few. I know that red means love, obviously. Um, yellow is friendship, blue is unattainable love, which is my favorite, and black is for death. All right, well, there's also a couple others in there. Uh, white, purity, obviously. Ivory, different than white, means luxury. Uh, peach uh, symbolizes sympathy. Orange is passion. I would have thought red would be passion, it's yeah, orange. Makes sense. Uh, pink is admiration. Lavender, royalty, as you would imagine. And green, one I don't see very often, uh, symbolizes peace. Wow, a man who knows his flowers. Very cool. Very cool. You know, what I loved most about that piece was that it was a uh, local small business. So if anyone out there would like to support local businesses, here are some more ideas. If you're looking to go above and beyond to impress your special someone this Valentine's Day, look no further than Las Vegas' newest floral arrangement shop, Eileen Entertainment. This store provides a unique experience where guests can watch their designs come to life and grab a coffee, all in one. Just in time for Valentine's Day, Las Vegas welcomed the store opening of Eileen Entertainment, a floral decor business. While Eileen Entertainment has been making deliveries for about a year now, the opening of the actual store provides more possibilities for the business to grow. I just wanted people to be able to come in and like look around, grab a coffee, like watch the actual florist make your flowers in front of you and make that a total experience instead of just ordering online. You could come in and really take like the morning with someone and just try something new. Eileen Entertainment offers several decor options such as their beautiful bouquets, magnificent balloons, and now with the storefront, you can even grab their signature coffee drink called the Eileen, which is sure to make your Instagram aesthetic. And with Valentine's Day coming up, there's never been a better time to stop and smell the roses. So for Valentine's Day, um, the day before Valentine's Day, the day of and the day after, we're only doing our Valentine's Day bundles. If you see compared to anywhere else, um, our prices are really good because they have like included chocolates, the flower bouquet, and the teddy bear. Although you can purchase the day of Valentine's Day, they are estimating they will sell around 700 bouquets. So ordering ahead of time is appreciated. Eileen Entertainment is sure to make your sweetheart feel extra special. For pricing and to see everything they have to offer, head to their website at EileenEntertainment.com or drop by their new location at 5695 East Charleston Boulevard so you can get your boo, the bouquet, of their dreams. COVID-19 has taken a big toll on local businesses, yet going to the farmer's market is one of the easiest ways to support these businesses. I visited Fresh 52 Farmer's Market at Tivoli Village and got a feel of the close community here in Las Vegas. COVID-19 may have taken away a lot of normal activities around the Las Vegas Valley, but some haven't changed, like the farmer's market. Fresh 52 Farmers and Artesian Market is a lively open-air market in Southern Nevada, where the community can come together to celebrate and empower each other. The farmer's market showcases a lot of different types of local businesses across the valley, and with live music, it makes the experience even more enjoyable. BBB Bakery, also known as Best Banana Bread, is one of the local vendors at Fresh 52 Farmer's Market, selling a variety of tasty treats. Uh, it's important to be part of the farmer's market because, first of all, it gives us a local presence, um, which, you know, to get our name out there, we, we got to be known a little bit. Uh, it's nice to connect with everybody locally within Las Vegas as well, and I think it's just good for the community overall. Another local business at the farmer's market, Southwest Crafts, Oils, and Greens, sells microgreens and other unique items to the Las Vegas Valley. Support the local vendors 
And also with our microgreens, they're super nutritious. It just seemed like the natural thing to do was to come and go to the farmer's market. Being at the farmer's market is one of the easiest ways to support local businesses in our area. Enjoying the nice weather, live music, and fun items at all the local businesses is a great way to strengthen the Las Vegas community. Fresh 52 has two open locations, Tivoli Village and Sandstone Park Plaza. For more information and for hours, visit their website at fresh52.com. Coffee and flowers all in one place. Ugh. And uh, local businesses, like it's like they're speaking my love language. Yeah, and I didn't realize actually that farmers markets were such a big hit out here in Vegas. And, uh, and you're right though, the local aspect does make everything you know, a little more appealing. Exactly. Supporting local is always fulfilling because we have a lot of great businesses and organizations throughout Vegas. They're dedicated to making a difference, like the one Simone spoke to. February marks Black History Month, and I had the pleasure of speaking with Minister Stretch Sanders, who is the president of New Era Las Vegas. New Era Las Vegas is one chapter of a nationwide advocacy group, helping to empower and encourage black people in black communities, not only during the month of February, but all year long. So many of our leaders and so many of organizations, they pop out and they pop out, right? Our job is to pop out and stay out. People need to know who we are. They need to know we are the leaders. We are who we've been waiting on. We are who we've been asking for. Anybody can give out backpacks in August, Halloween candy in October, tur turkeys for Thanksgiving, toys for Christmas. Who's going to come after the holidays? And that's what we do. We, we serve 365. So from March to October, we do hood to hood. Hood to hood, we go into black communities door by door giving out groceries. It's like the Mary Wesley's ride, but it's, it's community engagement, it's cleanups, etc. So from November to February is Mary Wesley's ride community grocery program. So we serve 365. Another program we do is called Do For Self For Else. It's one of our empowerment programs. We teach about literacy, uh, financial literacy, credit, home ownership. Another program is the Buy Black Tour. We go to black owned businesses. We go to them, bring in resources and patronizing them. And so that's just a few of what we do, but the basis of New Era Nation and the basis of New Era Las Vegas is service. Everything we do is about empowering our people. We don't just do things because it's, it's, it's popular to do it. Our focus is consistency, right? So you can go anywhere in the 89106 area, anywhere in Las Vegas and ask about New Era Las Vegas and our work speaks for itself. And so again, our work is just, it's focused on serving, building, and loving, empowering the black community, being a voice, standing up for our community, you know, being a shoulder people can lean on, cry on, hold on to, and that's how we transform our communities. And we say community, we mean the ghettos, the hoods, we mean the real conditions. We're not talking about, you know, suburbs, we're talking about going in the real deal conditions. A lot of us are afraid to go in these conditions, but you can't be afraid of your people, you know, because perfect love casts out fear. So when you have love for your people, you're not afraid of the conditions that your people bring. I'm tired of marching, I'm tired of protesting. I wish, I wish we could just get organized and this stuff would stop. But at the same time, I, I salute it and I still salute those who take a stand. You know, it, it takes a, a very unique person and courageous person to continue to march and protest because you're putting yourself out there to be hurt, to be tear gassed, to be arrested, et cetera. So I, I salute those individuals. But I think at this point, it's time to level up. And the next step to that type of organizing is this type of organizing going into communities, feeding them, clothing them, nurturing them, changing their mentalities, right? Because black lives can't matter until we matter to each other. Power to the people. Thank you. Minister Stretch Sanders said at this point, they are just looking for people to help support them, whether that be through cash donation at dollar sign serving the people or by physical donations of food, clothing, or toiletries. You can also donate your time at any of their food pantries to get involved. Check them out on social media, which is New Era Las Vegas. Power to the people. I like that. And he was clear about helping people all year long. Right, not just at a certain time of the year, which is wonderful. He said, serving, building, and loving. So good. Well, as we said earlier, and as Simone said, uh, February is Black History Month, which most of you already know. But did you know that February was chosen because of two specific birthdays? Yeah, those being Frederick Douglass and, of course, Abraham Lincoln. The celebration of Black History Month started in 1926 and became a month-long celebration 50 years later in 76. Speaking of history, did you know that over the span of the last 50 years, UNLV has had nine chapters from the National Panhellenic Organization. 
Adding these chapters has only created more diversity both on campus and in our community. The sorority Delta Sigma Theta was the first one to touch down on campus in June 1970. Then in 76, we welcomed three more organizations, fraternities Omega Psi Phi and Alpha Kappa Psi, as well as the sorority Alpha Kappa Alpha. Continuing on, in December of 1986, the fraternity Phi Beta Sigma set up shop, and in the winter of 1993, fraternities Sigma Gamma Rho and Alpha Phi Alpha decided to join us. By the end of the 20th century, the sorority Zeta Phi Beta called UNLV home finally, and on January 11, 2012, the fraternity Iota Phi Theta made the Divine Nine complete here at UNLV. Shifting the focus now from campus history to campus news, starting with a great way to de-stress and feel better overall. As usual, with the new year comes new resolutions, and our very own Campus Rec Services has something for you to get back into shape. Classes of all sorts just started back up again, and for those looking to burn off those holiday pounds, I met up with Sarah Repman to find out more about what the rec center is safely offering and how excited they are to see students again. We're so excited to have all of our students come back and check out our rec center. We have a lot of special events that we do throughout the rec center, which you can find on our homepage. We have our rec resolutions that's happening in February, so if you are a little winded when you're walking up those stairs you can join our rec resolutions and we can help you with your fitness goals and they're not just even physical fitness we're also talking about nutrition during these rec resolutions as well to mental health as well so if you want to hop in you can sign up for our rec resolutions which is on our website or you can go to our social media account Everything comes with your tuition, so it's all free to come to our group fitness classes and also our special events. So we hold about six special events each semester, and so a few of them this year are also going to be outdoor yoga, outdoor spin, virtual bike rides through Australia. Yes, you heard her right. Australia. Now that's pretty cool. We're pretty cool. We try to be as cool as possible here, but since Traveling is restricted for a lot of people. Um, we wanted to create that opportunity where you could still travel in a sense, but virtually. So that's why we're going to Australia. I know it's a little hard coming out of quarantine sometimes. I've been there. I was struggling uh, when I had to start coming back and teaching classes as well, too. It's, you know, got a little winded myself. So I totally understand, but we're here to help you during that winded time <laughs> and you can climb those three fly stairs now without any hesitation. Classes are going on now until April, so take advantage of these free opportunities while you can. You can find all the available classes online at unlv.edu slash campus rec and be sure to bring your rebel card and a mask if you want to attend those classes in person. Thanks, Devin. More than 31,000 students are currently enrolled here at UNLV, and all of them have a story. Some of those stories you might already know, or at least scrolled past. I do that, and then I talk, and I put a green screen effect behind it. TikTok, we all know the app, and we think we know the creators. But what about the stories behind those creators? Kaylee Jukicfish is a UNLV student and one of the millions of TikTok creators who's found success with the app. Today, she shows us how. Let's learn about a random Titanic passenger. We will learn about Mr. Mansur Hanna. Mr. Hanya was from Syria and he had immigrated to Ontario, Canada in 1899 where he worked as a farmer. Like so many other individuals, Kaylee started creating content partly out of boredom and partly out of passion. I also work at the Titanic exhibition as an artifact specialist and I was furloughed of course and I can't keep my obsession to myself so on the anniversary of the sinking on April 14th I decided to post on TikTok uh, from my Snapchat camera roll a story of when I met one of Titanic's descendants. So at work today, I met a descendant from Titanic. Her great-grandmother was Leah Rosen. She was third class, and she survived by being like, basically human ladder thrown from third class up the side of the ship. And it ended up doing really, really well. So I decided from there that I would just keep telling more stories about passengers and just fun 
facts about the Titanic and history, and it really took off. Well, so far, I've accumulated almost 50,000 followers, and it's a really positive community. I have a lot of fun. It doesn't feel like work. It's been an overall wonderful experience. Another UNLV student who has found success with the app in a different genre is Jessica Corona. I definitely love all the social, social media platforms. Um, I love doing content about, usually about traveling. I had a blog before, so I figured, I was like, well, why don't I start making videos out of the blogs? I have I don't have a YouTube channel, so I was like, why don't I start with TikTok? I made about like six videos of all, all travel feed, mm -hmm. and then I was scrolling on my For You page and I saw um, a trend. So I was like, let me try doing it, but I had no idea it was gonna blow up. Nobody pray for me. It been a day for me. Yeah, yeah. The next morning I wake up and I had like 15,000 followers and I was like, what in the world? And I right. see the video and I had a million views and it's getting reposted everywhere. So it was a really cool experience. With such success, I had to ask the girls if they had any insider knowledge on the Creators Fund or TikTok's algorithm. So the TikTok Creator Fund is just a way for creators out there to make a little bit of money for what they do. It's not too much, like for every video I make maybe about 50 cents. Uh, you have to have at least 10,000 followers, get at least 100,000 views per 30 days and be over the age of 18 and you can qualify and just make money based on the amount of views and interactions that people have with your videos. People can view your stuff, but if they're not sharing, liking, or commenting, it's not gonna pop up on other people's pages. So how do they come up with their content ideas? I pretty much take a lot of inspiration from the comments that I get. I do a lot of reply to comments so that people can feel that they're involved and that they're learning alongside with me. So I have a Yelp account. Every time a new like restaurant or like a hot and trending place is opening, Yelp will notify you. So oh. that's my niche to like, okay, I gotta go and hit okay. up this place and make a video out of it. And the girl's advice for those of us too scared to tick or talk? Just jump in and do it. The key to TikTok, a lot of the times it isn't having really, really good, well-edited content. It's just consistency, staying in it. If you have an idea uh -huh. and on TikTok, like just do it and just post it. Who knows where it's gonna get you. You can follow Kaylee at KJ Fish and Jessica at Jess Killing It with two T's. And if you do decide to follow them, here's what you can expect. The biggest thing that I hope people get is I hope that they see how excited I am about history and how excited and how much I love the history of the Titanic. And I hope that people can also kind of jump in and be as passionate about it as I am. Please feel free to follow if you want to come nerd out about Titanic with me. I want them to be able to live through the TikToks. I know a lot of people don't have the money or abilities to travel as much, yeah. but I would definitely want them to like know that the world is so big. There's so many cultures. It's such a beautiful place. I was able to like expose them to something other than like their small town yeah. or the same little places that they go to. It was really cool hearing both of their stories. If you know a UNLV student with a cool story, we want to hear about it. You can nominate them to be in our student spotlight. You can reach out to us at UNIV Speaks UNLV, or you can send it to me directly at V from the LV. Last semester, we talked about the Live from the Performing Arts series that has been streaming online. And this semester, we will now feature its final performance. To offset the costs that the PAC has incurred, UNLV's own Professor Kobo, uh, Ricardo Kobo that is, will be taking the stage for this exclusive event. Originally scheduled for last December, now on Friday, February 12th, live from the Performing Arts Center will feature acclaimed classical guitarist and UNLV professor, Ricardo Kobo. Before the original date, we caught up with him and asked him a few questions to get to know a little more about him. When I moved here, I, I wasn't necessarily thinking about teaching, but uh, it, it just kind of came as part of, of what I was doing here and I thought I'd, I'd give something back. I was thinking more along those lines. I, I, had ne I really didn't prepare as a teacher, you know, I'm really a performer of music. My ultimate goal was to play live music and to, and to work with others. Uh, as a musician and a coach. So my, my teaching at UNLV began, you know, not very formally. I had, a, a, you know, many students followed me here from different parts of, of the country and, you know, several states. Everybody knew that I was moving to Vegas for a little while. And so I had this long following, you know, I had about a dozen kids follow me here. And, and that's how it began. There's that perception that, you know, teachers are there because they can't play. 
and and nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, many teachers are here, like myself, because I chose to share my my life experience with young kids who really want. So I'm I mean I'm very picky at this point in my life because I've I've paid a lot of dues, you know, in different types of of teaching situations. So I I work very very in depth with kids that I mentor, that I prepare, and that really want to go to the professional world and become part of that music sharing experience you know I, I work with very serious kids that have enormous dedication and who obviously have very very uh, beautiful gifts with music probably the most important thing is to not despair because this will change too this will pass you know the the permanent possibility that life is is in constant flux that it is going to change and, and that it is going to throw many many challenges at you uh, and if those challenges are stronger than your passion your art will suffer. So I think that this is a double-edged sword. It's a, it's a situation where there's a lot of conflict and despair, but also a situation that, that offers you technology that can up your game. Tickets for the live stream event are still available and can be found by searching live from the PAC on UNLV's calendar page. And you can contact PAC box office at unlv.edu for more info. Well, that's our show. We want to thank all of you for tuning in and supporting our show by students for students. Yes, thank you so much. And be sure to tell your friends and family. Follow us on all our social media at UNIV Speaks UNLV for more content and the occasional debate. Yes, like the one we just recently posted about what is the worst gift to get on Valentine's Day. <sighs> well, I'd still say it's getting a Valentine's with somebody else's name on it. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I'd say the socks. Like, let's stop with the socks. Let's not do that. Tell us what you think, and we'll see you next time on University Speaks.